Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the first ever episode of Theme Park History 101. I am your host, Jeremiah. Um, anybody who has followed along with Laughing Place through our few months of getting to know us through all our live streams, our multiple live streams, uh, you probably know me from uh, just about every show we've done. Uh, I do tend to pop up in the different shows. I've also am the walker and talker main time for the theme parks here at Walt Disney World and Disney Springs. So I decided to do this show because I'm a nerd. Um, as you can tell behind me, I collect Disney memorabilia. I've been going to the parks longer than I want to admit. Uh, so I started going to the parks as a very young child. I grew up in Disney lands shadow out in the Southern California area. Um, did those parks for most of my life. This show is not going to be only about Disney. It's going to be about theme parks in general. I want to focus on most theme parks across the US, uh, maybe cross over to the pond at some point, get some of our special guests that may know things over there if they don't mind sitting up late with us. But for this first episode, I am bringing in one of our historians, um, Cole. There he is. Hey, Cole, how are you doing? Hello, good to be here. So Cole, tell us about your history with the parks. All right, so just like you, I have been going to the park since a very young age. I first went to Disneyland when I was about 10 days old. Uh, we, my, my parents were a little crazy like that. We all kind of, everyone in our family competes for who went there the earliest because we all grew up, like as we said, like in the shadow of Disneyland. And I've lived in Southern California my whole life. So I also have Universal even closer to me than Disneyland. Mm -hmm. So go there all the time. So really like, all theme parks are just so much fun. And it's just, I don't know. I don't know how you can't not like them. Like, I get that you can't, but in my mind, it doesn't compute. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things that there are definitely people that I've known throughout my life. And I'm sure that you, especially <laughs> being somebody who has done crazy things with the parks, have the friends that are like, you're going back to the park? So how can you do that? Why do you do that? Yeah. And, you know, my answer is always, that and this isn't supposed to sound as cheesy as it's going to come across um that's always been my laughing place that's where i've gone to mm -hmm. enjoy life to have fun and to escape everything and right now you know we need as much escape as possible yeah sadly on your side disneyland and those parks aren't open uh, but some of the stuff that you've been doing has definitely helped even me over here on the east coast that can go to the park on a regular mm -hmm. basis to experience my love of the parks out there. Um, yeah. So to put you on the spot, mm -hmm. Disney or Universal? Oh, definitely Disney, a hundred percent. Like I used to work at Universal and uh, just being there, especially Universal Studios just pales it. Maybe, I think there could be an argument of like Universal Orlando versus Disney World. But Disneyland versus Universal Hollywood is just not, it's not an argument, really. Yeah. And also to reach back out to everybody that's watching this, please, if you have any comments, questions, requests, um, anything strange that you want to know about the history of the parks, <laughs> you know, hopefully Cole and I can cover that. And uh, one of the jokes that I kind of started this off when I started writing this idea of Theme Park History 101, you know, Cole and I know a lot. Um, we don't know mm -hmm. as much as some people. Like, I would bow down in the presence of Jim Hill. He's somebody yep. who knows everything. But the theme park history 101 kind of plays off of the attractions at Disneyland when they go down. Mm -hmm. That's called going 101. <laughs> so, yeah, there may be times where we go 101 on stuff. Uh, but please, if you have any comments or you want to just join in the conversation, please feel free. We are here to be interactive, but we're also here to talk about cool, Cole's really cool project. But before we get to that, let's talk Universal. Yeah. You and I both worked at Universal Studios Hollywood mm -hmm. at different times. Um, I worked there in the mid to late 90s, early 2000s, when they were just kind of 
turning into a bigger theme park. Like yeah. Jurassic Park had just been built while mm -hmm. I was there. The studio tour, and that's one of the things like when we were talking about Universal versus Disney, they're two different parks. I mean, Universal yeah. Studios Hollywood mm -hmm. isn't so much a theme park as it is the best movie studio experience you can have. Uh, I don't know if I, I would say that Warner Brothers is a better movie studio experience. That Warner Brothers tour, I would rather, if I, anyone who comes, I recommend that to someone actually over Universal if they're looking for like a studio tour, you know? Yeah. But, but there is also in the- In terms of a theme park, yes, 100%. Yeah. yeah, it is real. Like that's one of the things, um, when I worked at Universal, I was over the studio tour Mm -hmm. at one time and people would always be like that's not real it's like nope that's real yeah, you you are on the back lot enjoying the movie studio yeah that's my favorite part actually about horror nights these last like five or six years they always build a few mazes down on the back lot so you get to walk through the streets of new york and everything like that and it's just like where else are you going to be able to just stroll through the mm -hmm. streets of new york just for fun and hanging out there. It's a pretty unique experience. Yeah, that, I mean, I've done the Warner Brothers tour and it is very impressive. They've yeah. definitely turned that into a bigger event than it has mm -hmm. been over the past few years. And I know, uh, I think it was last year they started their own Halloween type yeah. experience. Um, I didn't get a chance to experience that, Neither but it, it looked interesting and it's nice to see, you know, somebody giving Halloween Horror Nights a run for their money out there. Yeah. Uh, Not Scary Farm and Halloween Horror Nights I always feel are in two different categories, but mm -hmm. they're both the best experience you can have. Yeah. And then you also have uh, like the, what is it? The Haunt at Six Flags, which is like <laughs> almost three different tiers. You have all these different things and they're all in different locations. So they have such different clientele. It's really interesting yeah. just how Halloween happens here. Yeah, and that's, I mean, I know we're moving into November, but Halloween, I think, is definitely the highlight in Southern California. Um, mm -hmm. Being here in Orlando area, I will always fly out to California during the October, September time to experience everything because it really is, you can do in three nights, if you go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you can usually hit Disney, Universal, yeah. and Knott's. Mm -hmm. See, I do the opposite. I usually fly over to Orlando in that September, October area because you get food and wine, you get Halloween Horror Nights at Universal. It's, there's a lot going on there too, which is always exciting. It, it is always, the grass is always greener on the other side and yeah. depends on which side of the continent you're on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I I have to say that, you know, being out here, I love Halloween Horror Nights at Universal. It's, it is the premier Halloween activity, oh, yeah. but going into not scary farm, that's, that's the most unique experience because it is the oldest scary farm or mm -hmm. Halloween type activity. So yeah. there's always something new and exciting out there. And, you know, you never know when they're going to dig up Elvira to bring her back to do a show <laughs> or something. Yeah, I actually, this is going to be a shocker. I have been to Knott's Berry Farm one time in my life. It was on a field trip in fifth grade. That's the only time I've ever gone because normally it's going to take me 45 minutes to an hour to drive down to Disneyland. And since I already have an annual pass for Disneyland, I don't really want to pay to go to Knott's Berry Farm. So it's like, well, I'm already in Anaheim. I guess I'm just doing this. Like, I don't really go to Anaheim other than for Disney. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely need to head out there. Next next year when I come out, we'll go hit knots. Um, yeah, Shelly, you definitely need to. Shelly definitely needs to go do Halloween at the West Coast. I know mm -hmm. she's been threatening over and over again to do knots and the Disneyland experience, which that's a whole other topic with their yeah. Oogie Boogie Bash and everything now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so when you worked at Universal, you were in show control? No, I was in food service. So when I got oh, hired, I was 16 years old. And the only job available to minors was food service. So that's what I did. <laughs> How long did you work at Universal? For two years. That was basically my high school job, which was pretty cool to say, oh, what's your job in high school? Yeah, I work at Universal Studios. I go there every weekend. Like, whatever. No big deal. Like, get yeah. through my food for free. It's cool. <laughs> 
No, and that's one of the things, especially in the San Fernando Valley. Like, I grew up in Lancaster in, North, in okay. the high desert. And mm -hmm. then I started, I moved down to Sherman Oaks and started working at Universal. Yeah. Um, my One of my favorite claims to fame is when I started working at Universal, it was 94. So mm -hmm. I went into Universal. I lived down the road. I took a bus there. I didn't have a car. Uh, wow. They For my ID that they took, it was my Disney annual pass. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I was hired to Universal with my photo ID being my Disney annual pass. That was my, <laughs> so funny. Um, yeah, it, it was definitely back then. It was a more of a family affair for Universal. I mean, yeah. Universal Florida had opened, but Islands of Adventure was still a little bit out. Um, mm -hmm. so it was, you know, they had just, when I came on back to the future had just been the new thing. So I got to experience the transition yeah. from the, hour and a half studio tour to the 45 minute studio tour mm -hmm. to the, Hey, we're going to hit Kong, <laughs> um, earthquake, flash flood, just the quick tour. Yeah. And, and I was lucky enough as a child to go to universal. So it was definitely mm -hmm. fun to see the transition of, you know, I am sure before you were working there, Yes, long before you were working there, it used to be like two and a half hours. That was your entire yeah. day was writing so the studio tour. You were in and out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, you know, that's one of the things that I definitely miss. And I'm really sad that my last trip out to California was just about a month ago. And, you know, mm -hmm. as with everything in California, everything's still closed up. Yeah. But going up the city walk was a fun experience, just being mm -hmm. able to look over the wall and go, oh. I'll see that again yeah. someday. Yeah, I haven't ventured to downtown Disney or City Walk yet, just because I think I'll be too sad. So I've uh, I've kept my distance because I don't want to tempt myself. I don't want to feel like I have to jump over the walls to get in. <laughs> and that's one of the things, um, you know, with the Buena Vista Street opening sometime mm -hmm. this month, and yeah. it'll be interesting to see because California is an annual pass based crowd, mm -hmm. will it be shopping or will it be, Hey, we're going to take our first Instagram photo in seven, eight <laughs> months now. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Who knows how much shopping will actually be going. I feel like it's like, I just want to stand in California adventure. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah. you and I, I'm sure we have both have done that uh, yeah. where it's, you know, I, there have, I, I don't want to admit this, but I'm sure that you have something very much the same where middle of the afternoon, you look at your watch going, mm, traffic isn't bad, but I could make it to Disneyland to get a Dole Whip in about an hour. <laughs> yes, I have, uh, I have experienced this before, 100%. So, so what is your craziest Disneyland or Disney parks experience that you've done? I feel like you're having me lead into this. So yes, I there was one day when I did all the rides in Disneyland in one day, um, just for fun. And we it was this rare day in January where I was like, crowds aren't that busy and every single attraction is open. And normally, you know, something's being refurbished. So I just looked at my friend the night before because we were playing together. I was like, this is the day we're going to do all of the rides today he's like all right sounds good and then sure enough we got them all in somehow we even took like a four-hour diversion in california adventure and just hung out there in the middle of the afternoon and we did take it till the very end i think we got in line for peter pan as our last ride around 11 45 p.m and we had started at 8 a.m so it did we we took it to the wire basically <laughs> Yeah. And that's a long day. I, you know, it's yeah. hard to do a rope drop anymore for me. And there are definitely times out here where to cover stuff for laughing place, it's first thing in the morning. And then yeah. last thing at night is covering mm -hmm. one more thing. So yeah. And Disneyland, the nice thing about Disneyland, of course, is it's more compact. That's, that's yeah. one of the benefits mm -hmm. we've always had out there. Yeah, no, very compact, but also it just, uh, it's, you also have to drive 
farther, at least for me. Like, that's the nice thing, you know. I feel like many people live in the more general area around Orlando, whereas California, like, people have annual passes within a 100, 200 mile radius Mm -hmm. and go all the time within that. So it's kind of, it feels a little different in that regard too, where you're like, okay, got to drive home now. Yeah. It's always a destination. Even if you were, you know, driving, it's the, how long it takes to get there is a considering factor in many cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I, when I go out to visit, I'm usually staying in Burbank. Mm-hmm. That's where I live. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, probably right down the road from you. Yep. Um, so it's always, you know, get there as soon as possible, hit the rides early in the morning, and then yeah. usually out before five, because mm-hmm. anybody who's ever driven in Southern California knows it will transition from a 45 minute drive to a two and a half hour drive. Yeah, I. Uh, it's either you stay until three, or then you're stuck waiting till eight. Like, you don't, there's that middle mm-hmm. ground between three and eight. You don't really want to leave there. No, it's always, you figure out where you're going to eat at downtown Disney, go mm-hmm. in, maybe enjoy a show. Yep. You're killing yeah. time at that point. It's like, you know what? I'd rather just hang out here than sit in traffic for two hours. Yeah. Unless you have something that is a dire need and you know, yeah. if you're planning to go down, you don't make anything that's a dire need. Yep, correct. <laughs> so jumping into the history part, mm-hmm. um, you have been writing for Laughing Place for how many years? I just, August was four years. Mm-hmm. Four years, and you've covered just about every extinct attraction possible. Well, I know that's okay. not true. But. It seemed like that for a while. I was really running low, and then with the project we'll talk about later, I managed to pick up about 200 new ones. So. Oh, wow. We got a lot more to cover now. A lot of parades. Many parades had not been covered. Yeah, I can remember our conversation about parades and fireworks. And we're like, yep. no, what about this? What about that? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> yep. So out of all the articles you've written of the, you know, everything you've covered, mm-hmm. You've covered most of my favorite attractions. Yeah. Um, and you've not only covered Disney, you've branched out to some other parks to cover their mm-hmm. extinct attractions. Which one would you say is your favorite that you've done so far? It's a tough question. Like, this is always a big question. I am, I'm pretty proud of my great movie ride article, though at the time, like, everyone was writing great movie ride articles because it came mm-hmm. out like that weekend that it closed. But I just, I did something that I'd never really done with it of kind of um, just like relating everything to the ride and talking about how it works with all of the um, like attractions or not after with the movies and just tying everything together. And I was pretty proud of how that worked out. I also really liked my Western River Expedition one because in that one, I got to kind of play pretend a little bit and walk people through the ride. Cause there's obviously no video of an attraction that never existed. So that was kind of fun as well. And I thought it turned out really well. Yeah. The Western river expedition is definitely one of my favorites. I, it's, it's such a unique attraction that, mm-hmm. you know, Mark Davis spelled it out almost completely <laughs> to guess. Yeah. And we've seen over the years, different models come out. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, you can put it together, but at the same time, it's still, you have to use your imagination for about yeah. 90% of it. There's a really good Tony Baxter video from when there was one D23 when he walked through everything mm-hmm. in Western River Expedition. And that was really cool to see. Yeah, that was, I was there that day or for that event. Um, so it's definitely been something that, Western River Exposition, for those of you who don't know, sorry, we're kind of just, again, this is nerdy talk. Um, The Western River Expedition was a attraction designed to go into the Magic Kingdom, pretty much where Big Thunder Mountain is now. Um, It was designed originally by Mark Davis as, as the version of Pirates of the Caribbean for the Magic Kingdom, because Mm -hmm. they didn't need a Pirates of the Caribbean here because the Caribbean is just down the road. Yeah. 
And pirates so, are still around, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this, you know, this was the concept art appeared in early postcards in the 1970 was the postcard time. Um, mm -hmm. So they went through with that and that was pushed to the second phase. And then when Magic Kingdom opened in 71, everybody started asking, hey, where's Pirates? Because Walt Disney did such a great job before he passed away of promoting Pirates of the Caribbean that they decided to shoehorn in, mm -hmm. and this is the part where I express my opinion, a lesser <laughs> version of Pirates of the Caribbean into the Magic 100%. Kingdom. Yeah. But the Western River Expedition would have been, it, it would have been the first attraction to actually kind of incorporate two attractions because one yeah. of the original designs was a coaster on top of the show building, mm -hmm. Yeah, which later on we learned what turned into the idea of Big Thunder, which to delve into the rumors, the old stories, um, that is what caused the biggest rift between Tony Baxter of Walt Disney Imagineering when he was becoming the new guard and Mark Davis, the old guard, where Tony, where Mark Davis, and he said this publicly before, he felt that Tony killed his attraction and then going on to do Splash Mountain and take his attraction or take his animatronics from America Sings just kind of continued that trend. But yeah, go ahead. Tell salty. us a little bit about the Western River Expedition, Cole. I mean, you kind of just talked about it. Like that's really the the core of it. But it, it was just kind of pirates, but reimagined as cowboys. Really, like was kind of the whole idea behind it. So. The main attraction would have been a boat ride going through very similarly to how pirates went. And there was just a lot of funny scenes in it with just gags that they would have of what cowboys kind of looked like and them having like gunfights and stuff like that. And it was, it was pretty exciting. Really just seeing even the concept art, you're like, whoa, this would have been kind of cool. And it was interesting though. So I was in Disneyland Paris earlier this year. And going through Phantom Manor, it really made me kind of think of Western River Expedition. It feels like some of those elements from Western River Expedition made their way into Phantom Manor, which is the version of Haunted Mansion in Disneyland Paris. Which was a Tony Baxter concept. Yep. So exactly. I'm sure that, again, the the circle of trust between the two of them that was broken Tony tried to <laughs> exactly, and yeah. when you when you talk about pieces of um, Western River Expedition, I mean we have to talk about one of the true pieces that exists here at Walt Disney World at Epcot on the Living with the Land attraction. Mm -hmm. Those buffalo were said to originally be constructed for the Western River Expedition, and then they just kind of made their way into Epcot years later. They're like, here you go. We have these buffalo sitting around. Would you like them for another attraction? Can can you guys do something with these, please? They're just taking yeah, up space please. here. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I think we've done geeky enough. Let's let's move on to the probably one of the coolest concepts that I've seen come across Laughing Place or any other website. Mm -hmm. This interactive map. Um what I'm starting with here is Disneyland 1998 uh, because you're in, you're in 2020 no, right now. I was in 98. You probably refreshed the page. Yes. I believe it resets to 2020. So talk about some of your dots here. So each of these dots represents what attraction was there during that year. Um, and I just kind of was thinking, oh, something like this doesn't exist out there where it's just like a timeline of what was in each park at each time. And I was like, I could probably make that. And then sure enough, I was able to. And so, yeah, so how it works is you can kind of choose whatever year you want to do, and then you're able to go and just see what's there. So like right now he's hovering over Swiss Family Treehouse which was there at the time Submarine Voyage was there. That was the year it closed, unfortunately. And you can also see some interesting ones where you'll see like a little circle inside the dot. 
So that means there was a couple of different attractions at that location at that time. So the area where Buzz Lightyear is had rocket rods and had the American Space Experience during that year. So you can see the year it was there. And then also if you click on it, then you're able to learn more, which will link you to an attraction or to a, like a web page from Laughing Place where I've probably written about that attraction before. And then you can also watch if you click on the Rocket Rods one. So there you see I've written about it and you can watch a video of it if you want to relive it. So really it's a chance to just kind of go back in time and see what life was like. And you could, most of them have videos. I will say like there's a good amount that have videos. So you really can kind of like walk your way through, go on whatever attraction you want to ride. It's, I don't know. I think it's pretty fun to play around with. Yeah, I earlier when I was playing around with it, um, I did because I'm one of the few people that was lucky enough to experience clicked on the rocket rods, which takes you to a video of the rocket rods, mm -hmm. which the, one of my favorite things about this is that the is person cool. that filmed this is one of my old friends that hopefully sometime down the line I will have on this show. That's pretty funny. Yeah, it's one of those like, and I, I love that you have all of the different, you know, you, you didn't just find one thing, you went as deep as possible Yeah. To, to track down videos or, you know, go into your own articles, which some of your articles, I've gone through and just been in shock of different things that it's like, wait, I didn't remember that or, yeah. you know, what was there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought this was kind of, I almost thought of this like a capstone project. I was like, you know, I've already done a lot of these things. I really just have to kind of piece it all together. And then sure enough, it turns out pretty well. And the math changes for each year, which I thought was also cool. That, that actually took a long time. But once I got it to work, it was very exciting. Yeah, I love the changes. Like here we're looking at the 1955 Disneyland map, which was mm -hmm. just in one of the guidebooks. So it wasn't like yeah. the wall map like we were looking at in 98, mm -hmm. but you still were able to get the intricate details in there and point things out. Like again, the Phantom yeah, Boats, the shortest attraction ever known to Disney. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect in terms of the locations, especially in years. So the whole map is built off of 2020 as a base year. So like for 2020, all of those locations are spot on, but then it, they get a little iffy when you get to the earlier years because you can only compress and stretch a map so many times before it starts looking really bad. Yeah, and we don't have, you know, pure maps of every single year. Yeah. Um, Let's go. You know, we move into 59, where there was a lot of the concept art that was done for Liberty Square, but you still were able to get the small details like the Matterhorn bobsled that opened that year. Yeah. Motorboat cruise. You know, it, it's it's amazing to just go in and be able to see these things and go, oh, that's what was there. I mean, you don't need yeah. a spot on map, but you definitely help with looking at these larger maps. <laughs> yeah, it puts everything kind of together. Do you have a favorite year map that you did? Um, hmm, that's a good one. I don't, I don't know. I, when I was putting it together, I kind of just was like, okay, I got to get all these maps in. And it was, <laughs> it was such a monotonous project that I didn't necessarily like hone in on. I kind of like 2005, but we could do that. The 50th anniversary. Yeah. Oh, see, because what we need to do is we need to get you to completely rewrite this so we can get the wall map that they put out in 2005 <laughs> that has the random skyway bucket floating in oh, there. Oh, yes. That would be perfect. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought 2005 looked nice, too. Yeah, it it's an amazing job, and it's it's definitely a, a massive, massive project. 
And you not only have it for Disneyland mm -hmm. and Disney California Adventure, you also went so far as to carry it across the country. <laughs> wow, this would have worked so well if I was like, hey, look how easy this was it's to okay do without because having we're carrying to on a conversation across the country. So that hey, it, look it at takes that. a little time when you have to go across the country like that. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, it, it, how much was it in the videos of like a, a phone that you can talk to each other will yeah. cost a few thousand dollars. <laughs> Classic interventions in Communicore. You gotta yes. look. They were still making that claim kind of an in interventions where you're like, okay, I feel like uh, you should kind of update what you're doing because this isn't gonna be that costly anymore. <laughs> I know, you know, now you can get a nice, cheap cell phone for a few hundred dollars. So it, it definitely is much easier now. But we're looking now at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And this is year 2020. Mm -hmm. Let's go so to, go ahead. With, with this, you have to use the arrows or the slider. I wasn't sure. People told me they liked the slider more. So some have the slider, some have the box. <laughs> Don't forget the great shows. <laughs> Get this a little bit larger so we yeah. can see some of the details. Um, you know, 1998 was the opening year of Disney's Animal Kingdom. So you do have things like the Dinosaur Jubilee, which yeah, is one of my I favorite. I had no idea that existed. No yeah, idea. Dinosaur Jubilee was definitely a unique thing for the parks um, mm -hmm. because just like Disneyland, you know, when they stuck, yeah. they stuck flags on the root on the weeds, calling them scientific names, they needed space fillers. So mm -hmm. the dinosaur Jubilee was one of those things that I was able to experience, but all it was, was them just going through and cleaning up bones that ended up later on being dino Sioux. But it was a fun little area and you could see the dinosaur bones that they had on display. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's it's amazing to just kind of watch Animal Kingdom, which in my opinion is one of the biggest changed parks through the yeah. years. Mm -hmm. It's and amazing can... to see how few attractions there were. You know, like oh, yeah. looking at those, look at, there's like 12, 14 dots, but like not that many. Yeah, let's see. Uh, we got Pocahontas and her forest friends, <laughs> which is now the yeah. Pandora bathrooms. Nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Festival Lion King, uh, Discovery Island Trails, which is Discovery Island Trails still. Yep. March of the Ardmals. March Ardmals. of the Ardmals, yes. Um, Discovery River Boats. I love uh, those. I love them. I don't know why I love them. <laughs> Um, Journey into the Jungle Book, which is one of my one of the shows that I really enjoyed. I was able mm -hmm. to see it the opening year, but you know it's it's gone to the ages. People yeah. now barely remember Tarzan rocks, and, but that's one yeah. of the things I love about this project is it is a chance to go in and learn about the history of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, enjoy that. Like <laughs> go on. Or, no, what were you going to say? I, was, I didn't have anything really to say. Uh, I enjoy that the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail, current occupants, Gorilla <laughs> Falls Exploration Trail. It was the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail for like maybe three or four months before they changed it to the um, to the other trail name that I can't think of off yeah. the top of my head. Uh, because people weren't seeing the gorillas everywhere. So they mm -hmm. started just kind of going, okay, we need to change that name. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, the, this project, I mean, how long did it take you to actually go through? I mean, I know you've been compiling the history mm -hmm. for the past more than four years, but to actually go through and create these six different maps. Um, I think each one probably takes, I mean, the whole project took me a little over a month of working on it, probably 
four to five hours a day. So, so this definitely wasn't a, just a, hey, I can program this in my spare time. It was No, this, this was a, I still don't have a job and I'm sitting around my house all day. So what if I make this my job? If only we all could do projects like this. Well, now I have a full-time job. So it's uh, a little harder to, it would have been a lot harder if I didn't have the text code. So actually I was finishing it as I was about to start the job and I was like, I gotta get this done before I start because then I'm never gonna get it finished. Yeah, I, I can speak for those like, this is a great idea, this will be perfect. And then you, oh wait, I have life that gets in the way. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to bring up the Disney's California adventure map, just because mm -hmm. that again is one of those, it's not just the, a little part of the map, it is the entire park has changed. Oh yeah, so much, especially in 2001 to now, it's like a huge difference. Mm -hmm. You just look at California Adventure and you're like, this, this is what opened in 2001? Are you sure? Cause I don't think that's right. As somebody who lived through that, just like you, you know, we can remember walls being up for years oh, yeah. while they built new things. So many I mean, years. This is the current-ish mm -hmm. version of it. Um, but then we go all the way back to 2001, where, like, okay, the so, <laughs> yeah, there's no Cars Land. There's not even a Bugs Land at this point. No. But we did have a uh, Malaburrito, so you can't. Oh yeah, look down and on look, those. At, look at the Malaboomer there in all its majestic glory. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, that's one of my favorite things about Disney's California Adventure. Now Disney California Adventure um, <laughs> is going through, and you know I was there on opening day, and I've enjoyed it ever since. But right now there are two attractions that are still the same the golden mm -hmm. zephyr yep. and the jumping jellyfish and yep, that's, that's it that's it that's it I mean, that's all. I mean grizzly river runs kind of the same still yeah it, without some cosmetic changes yeah. you know but, for the but most part, it's primarily i would say it's close enough to being the same, you know, like, yeah, you, it never went through the drastic changes that even like the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail went through. Yeah, I mean, and then, you know, all of Hollywood, mm -hmm. um, but let's, let's watch Hollywood through the years. Wow. 2002, they already put in Tower of Terror, even I though couldn't find a map. wasn't there. I couldn't find a map for 2002 or 2003, so I had to do all of them with 2004. You're limited by your resources. Exactly. I mean, again, I think we may be able to find you some maps through this, but do you want to go back and revisit this right away? At this point, it wouldn't be that hard to fit. I know what I have to do now, that if I were to get some maps, if anyone has maps of Disneyland from 2002 to 2003, or any maps where you see a repeat year, let me know, because that would not be that hard to fit. Yep, Cole at Laughing Place, that's the where, where you write mm -hmm. to. And yeah. we would be grateful for that, because, I mean, I'm sure somewhere, I know that I have maps buried in boxes they exist. somewhere. I know they yeah. exist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we move into 2005. Nothing like good old golden screams. Yeah, which is Halloween definitely. Map. Yeah, that one was uh, that one was an interesting show. Uh, I don't that one we it. actually, if you head on and not to not to move off of you and your no, great writing, we just brought up uh, out of our archives an article about Cal about golden screams, which I'm was the Halloween. It was a Halloween show award show. And, you know, they brought in villains. It was, it wasn't scary, but it was definitely something fun to watch. Mm -hmm. um, I know each year I looked forward to it because mostly Hades would show up. And that was one of the only times oh, yeah. he would ever show up around there. Mm -hmm. 
in 2006, we start to see things kind of start to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. 07, no, still there. And then 08, we start to get the darker, or I'm sorry, did we miss 08? No, there's 08. So. Yeah. I'm and mostly heading. When it's really, we're getting there. We're getting yep. so close. We're getting so close. Here it is. And then 11. Wait, what happened to the hubcap? What is all this going on around here? Where did it go? Where? Why are there walls? And then look, Cars wow. Land exists. It explodes. Yeah, and Buena Vista Street, one of the one of my favorite places in any Disney park is mm -hmm. definitely hanging out on Buena Vista Street, which, you know, you should probably head down there and uh, revisit for the first time know, in eight I months. I definitely should. But yeah, this project, I mean, if you are a fan of any of the North American parks, Disneyland, Disney California Adventure, Walt Disney World Parks, Magic Kingdom, Disney's Hollywood Studios, Epcot, and of course, Disney's Animal Kingdom, this is where you go to learn the history. And yeah. that's one of the nice things is you you did the leg work like yeah, I know I did. myself myself and Doobie we we we've lived through a lot of this and we you know our brains have far too much of this memory in it but yeah. you cataloged it all for us so yeah you know, now we don't have to do this anymore we it's still kind of crazy how it just like. It's all just in like an Excel database and it somehow can become that, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. It's just like a bunch of random numbers and letters in this spreadsheet can become this crazy interactive map that everyone can kind of use and just have fun with. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing more fun than revisiting the parks. Yeah. Uh, do we look at the Vault Disney that used to be on the Disney Channel years ago? and all the DVDs and books and everything, and YouTube has blown up. Yeah. I mean, that, that was one of the, my ever, other favorite things when I was looking at um, one of your, oh, it was the um, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, or mm -hmm. Honey, I Shrunk the Audience, and yeah. I clicked on that, and the video is up, and that links to Martin's vids, yeah. which we've talked about many times over the shows, of if you want to know history, that is oh, where yeah. you go. And That's the place. you don't just randomly link to somebody's article that doesn't know what they're doing. You did the legwork, found the information, and went as deep as possible. Yeah. It turned and I got really good at searching YouTube. Like really good <laughs> at it. <laughs> A new skill I've acquired. Yeah, I, I've definitely done that where it's like you're looking for that one thing. And not only, not always do people write the perfect description. It's yeah. you have to start putting in Disney attraction, and yep, then you'll yes. find something random. Exactly. Yes. Oh well, Cole. Let's wrap this up. It's getting mm -hmm. late. Um, we're well. It's late for me. It's already dark on your side. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Any more projects? Do you have a extinct attraction article coming soon that everybody should be excited for? Um, I don't, I can't even think of what's the next one. <laughs> every Thursday, every other Thursday, they come out on Laughing Place. But I think the more exciting thing is I have begun working on the international Disney parks as well for interactive maps of them. So it's a slow but sure process, but I'm hoping by the end of 2020 that we'll also have those on the site. So then everyone will be able to just kind of use them and We'll have it all then. That would be amazing. Well, one of the nice things about the international parks is they don't seem to update as often as no, the... they don't update and they're a lot less old. So they're actually, it's cut down a lot of time that I've had to spend on it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm thinking like Shanghai has added and subtracted maybe one or two things each. And that's yeah, been a I, few I years. Yep. Yeah, so it's they definitely only added something. Toy Story Land. Yeah. yeah. Which was kind of there like when they opened, or at least the <laughs> land was. Yeah. It was like borderline there. Yeah. It, it's it's such a great project to watch and enjoy. And you know, I like I said, I've gone through the parks 
most of my life. So there are times where I need to go and just search for something or get away from the stress of Mm -hmm. now. It's a great place to go and take care of that. And, you know, instead of randomly searching on YouTube for videos, you can go, hey, let me see what I can find. You can go to our website, bring that up, and then boom, you've got it. And it's perfect if you're like, what was there before that? I think I remember the name, but I can't think of the name. You can just know where it is and just keep going back and you'll find it. Yeah, that's the thing. There and there is so much. Like, like I said, there are things that I've completely forgotten about. But going through the different pages, you you find those small things, and even mm-hmm. just one click, you you see what was originally there, what's current there. Yeah. And then the photos. We we really need to put together a photo library of everything of all of yeah, us. Yeah, no, so, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So that'll be our twenty twenty one project. Yeah. That'll be the upgrade. Yes. Oh, one more cool thing is they're all living maps as well. So anytime that I like finish an article or that we have like a new video, it'll get upgraded in there. And you'll know pretty much as soon as the article comes out, I'll be able to upgrade it in just a couple minutes. And then you'll be able to see it on there as well. So it'll just keep growing as time goes on. Well, that's nice. So we have a new Rise video, and in the next couple of days, we'll have a uh, new Millennium Falcon video and a new mm-hmm. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway video. I yeah, so then those that. will be easy to throw in there. Exactly. So it is something great, and it does link to our YouTube, and we enjoy you guys all clicking on our YouTube. Uh, please, if you're watching this on YouTube, on Facebook, like, ring the bell subscribe so you know when we go live. I mean, tonight we had two shows back to back that made yeah. the premiere. We have trivia every twice a week, theme park talk, everything going on. And theme park history will hopefully be a long running show Wednesdays at yeah. 830. That's right. 530 mm-hmm. Pacific for those of you who enjoy the sun a little bit longer than we do. So, Colt, thank you very much, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thanks for having me.